Welcome to Athletes Unlimited Pro Basketball, presented by EY. Live inside Fair Park Coliseum, we take you to the court where the action happens. Week two concludes Team Mitchell, Team Gray, the former teammates that repped the orange jersey last week. They conclude the weekend neck and neck on the leaderboard. We're watching just like you are at home. Brendan Glasheen, Ari Chambers, Janae Sims will join us on the sideline. Two former teammates going at it here, and Alicia Gray hopes to keep that top spot. You know, Alicia Gray is not accustomed to losing. She's coming off of a loss, so how she can rebound that, I'm looking forward to. She said the emphasis today is on effort, and whereas Team Mitchell, they're saying we're not worried about anybody but us right now. And, the, you know, you have to tap into those X factors that have been happening. <laughs> Brendan tapped my shoulder. I'm telling you, it's not even fair right now. But we're going to see who can climb up that leaderboard and really make an impact on the on the game itself and then we have the leaderboard you know emily Inksler is really the only one that kind of can get up to that captain spot right brendan that's what it feels like right because odyssey sims at 28 22 tiffany mitchell is playing in this game today and then when you go from spots five through eight those are players that already all played today so realistically i mean emily Inksler with a Ballin kind of performance today with steals and blocks. She's number one in the league with 16 blocks. That's possible. And Maddie Segrist, don't count her out either. Right. Ari. She has been the X factor for Team Mitchell. They talk to us about her all the time. She plays into exactly what Team Mitchell was trying to say, that they wanted a big that can move. And she's showing that she's not just a knockdown three-point shooter, which is exactly what she does for the WNBA. She can play in the four and the five position, which is proof why this league is so important. You can showcase your ability and unlock new levels, just like Air Hearn. She has been the X factor for Team Gray. Honestly, her consistency is kind of wild. She's been consistent from the start. We talk about X factors, but if there's one player that you should be impressed with on the low, it's her. She affects both ends of the court. She's consistent and so steady, not forcing herself to play outside of what her strengths are, Brendan. Number one and number two on the leaderboard heading into today and also the top MVP scores. Gray Mitchell coming up next. Team Mitchell's starting five. Tiffany on the season, averaging about 24 points per game. Third in the league, Sydney Colson, her first pick in week two. Joins her in the backcourt, Berger, as well as Muldrow. Segrist round out the starting five for Team Gray. Alicia out there with Air Hearn, Ray Burrell, the two-way player, Emily Engsler, and Kalani Brown. Away we go. Week two concludes on this Sunday night with Team Gray. And Team Mitchell, Emily Engsler to start us off, a swish from deep. And she can do that. What I'm really looking forward to, because you see the discrepancy in points on the leaderboard, how these captains can unselfishly move the ball and get it to their teammates involved. We are keeping close tabs on the leaderboard. We said it, Engsler or Segrist with a big day could crawl into that top four. Those four players are the captains and they draft teams Tomorrow, Engsler up to five quick points. Be on the lookout for Emily Engsler racking it up because she does have the potential to overtake the top four on the leaderboard. And I wonder if she knows that she's playing. She's really been effective. She's already got all of Team Gray's points and just snatched the board. Jeff Wooten blows his whistle from up top. First foul of the game, our officials 
for game two of our doubleheader to wrap up week two. Jeff Wooten, Larry Linebaugh, and Trey Bowers. We're going to show this leaderboard all broadcast long. You can also check it out, auprosports.com. The draft is tomorrow on the Athletes Unlimited YouTube page at 1 Eastern. We'll remind you again as this game continues. You know, Emily Inksler came out showing exactly what she wanted to show. I talked to Captain Gray here, and she said that she can't teach effort, so she's dependent on her team to just inherently have it. And one thing to describe Emily Inksler is effort. She just never stops. Inksler coming into action today, second in the league in steals with 13 and leading AU in blocks with 16. Gray wants a turn to score. There she goes, 7-0 run to open the night for Alicia Gray and company. And that's nice synergy for Kalani to set her up to cut to the basket. T. Mitchell over their first three. Sydney Colson, who was excellent in the first quarter on Saturday, gets them going here. And she was, she's that steady hand. She's that veteran leadership that you want to keep the pace and play the game you know. Look at her, watch her slow it down and just making sure that the team Mitchell plays the pace that they want to play the whole game. You like to see Kalani Brown getting fed to the paint. I absolutely do. Like, why not feed the big? Why not feed Kalani? Who's touching that? I mean, Kalani Brown only took four shots on Saturday. Gray Burrell, yeah, a seat at the table. And Team Gray has got to really evaluate that. Like, why hasn't Kalani gotten more touches on the ball? You really want to utilize her down in the paint because that size alone will get you what you need to get. And for comparison, took 13 shots on Thursday. Air Hearn wrestles away that rebound. Team Gray, five for their first seven, make it for six of eight, Brown inside. That was fast, 13-2. Team Gray, an 11-point lead, two and a half minutes in. All right, Team Gray ain't messing around. Alicia wants to bounce back today, and Kalani Brown having a good start. Athletes Unlimited Pro Basketball is sponsored by EY. Fair Park Coliseum in Dallas, Texas. Second game of our Sunday doubleheader. Team Gray, four starters have scored and they have built an 11 point lead in the first two and a half minutes. 
40 world-class athletes with playoff intensity, top four point scores on the leaderboard at the end of each week are named team captains. And as of right now, the four captains from week two would be the four captains in week three. Which jersey they wear becomes the question. Let's welcome in Janae Sims, who listened in on the Team Mitchell huddle down 11. Janae, what can you tell us? Yeah, thanks, Brendan. Team Mitchell just really felt like they were making it so easy for Team Gray to get whatever they wanted. Um, they really want to try to make it hard to make those post-entry passes. Not like the one Alicia Gray just made now, but um, they're going to just keep trying to bring it on defense. And, you know, speaking of the post, Kalani's been really, really mobile, running the floor, getting down where exactly where she needs to be. Um, but when I was listening on the other huddle <laughs> with Team Gray, I was noticing that they were kind of pleased. Like, they were pleased with the tempo. I'm over here feeling like I have to whisper, it is dead silent because Kalani is shooting, honey. But um, It's just the nature of the headset. It's just the nature of the headset. It's noise canceling <laughs> over here. It's really a party in here. But just knowing that this is a tempo they want to play with and they want to continue to apply, apply defensive pressure and keep that up. Just the eyeball test. There's a purpose and a sense to get Brown going early. That's what you can feel watching the action. Absolutely, that was a discrepancy that they had last game. Like I said, she went, only got four touches, so just making sure that she, she they find her and really utilize her. And Kalani Brown with three field goal attempts on nine total. Our star in the stands to wrap up week two, Lexi Hull of Team Cloud. Lexi had a career day in the Lexi assist Brown. department. Oh, Lexi Brown, I apologize. Did I say Lexi Hull? Yes. My apologies. I know where we look alike. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> both Lexis have been outstanding. My apologies, Lexi no, Brown. No, Thanks okay. for being with us. Of and you course. had another great game, three Thank straight 20-point games. Yeah. Your team's rolling. You're rolling, too. Yeah, I mean, I when Tosh drafted me, I knew I was uh, going to have a good week. She's a great point guard, a great leader. Her basketball IQ is off the charts. So when she drafted me, I was really happy because I knew that she was going to get get me in my rhythm. and. That's exactly what happened. She has a lot of confidence in you, and you have a lot of confidence in yourself when you are playing under her. What about Natasha do you love playing with the most? What did you say, Ari? Sorry. Ha! She's watching the game, y'all. She's, oh, no, she's really locked in. Sorry, sorry. No, but you say you eat when, when you're on Natasha's team. What about her um, makes you play better? I mean, just her energy. I mean, y'all see how she, the energy she brings every single game um, on, both ends of the, on both ends of the floor defensively. That's where we get turned up at. Um, and for me, I know I'm not, I think I'm a pretty underrated defender, so I think Tosh brings that side of my game out and highlights it more than, you know, maybe other captains have. It's so funny you say you're an underrated defender, because I would honestly say that's a part of your game's identity, but if you could describe your game to somebody who's watching AU for the first time uh, and hasn't seen Lexi ball, uh, Brown really ball out, mm. What would you say? I mean, shooter, first and foremost. Shooter, shoot, honey. I mean, first I would say finesse, but you see me getting in the lane, getting yes. a little dirty now, okay? I think so, finesse I would be selling yourself short. I know. I feel like I got to find some new adjectives for my game because, you know, I, I'm trying to become a more well-rounded offensive threat. So um, this was a good week for me, for sure. Lexi, you've been a pioneer here for women's basketball, but specifically for Athletes Unlimited. What? With, it, now with about two weeks in now to year three, what have you made of the yes, product? Ray. I think it's great. I mean, every season it's gotten more competitive. We brought in more W players, and, you know, the level of competition just continues to increase. You know, I got two teammates here with Zai and Ray, and Ray just hit a nice little pull-up. Um, so, again, I mean, this, I, my first year in AU, you know, it changed the trajectory of my W career, gave me a lot of confidence, and, you know, made me fall in love with the game again. So seeing more younger players um, and even vets coming in who, you know, may have gotten lost in the sauce of WNBA coming here doing their thing, you know, that's one of my favorite things about AU. Let's take it off the court a little bit. What does Lexi Brown have going on in her life right now? Girl, I'm just trying to survive three games Hilarious. back to back. Um, I do a lot of Pilates. Um, shout out Solid Core. I love that. You are a different type um, of breed, honey. And I be in the gym with Coach Danielle. You know, we have another Sparks uh, family member, Coach Danielle. Um, so she she been getting me right this week. So you know it's a lot of work, and been exploring Dallas. Me and Ray have been uh, foodies, fake foodies. So we've been trying different restaurants around the city. What you been eating, Lexi? What what's good? Um, you know I really like the tacos here. They're not as good as the LA tacos, but they're close. Oop. 
A lot, you're gonna make a lot, ruffle a lot of feathers with that one, like Yeah, there's this um, <laughs> breakfast spot we went to called, I think it's called Ellen's. It was fire, so that might have been my favorite spot. It's near downtown. It was fire, it was so good. Mimosas, pancakes, all the things. <laughs> we have Lexi Brown with us for a star in the stands. You, you got a prediction? I mean, this one's starting to separate already. But oh, you, wow. You, you know I just looked at the score. Yeah. It happens, right? <laughs> you, we, we, have these, we have these conversations, and you look, and oh, wow, a 14-point lead for Team Gray. Yeah. Uh, you know, that is not what I was predicting. I thought, uh, you know, it was going to be maybe a little bit closer. Um, but again, basketball is a, ga a game of runs. You know, our game started a little bit similar to this, and it ended up coming down to the wire. So I hope that Team Mitchell can get it together and make this a, a fun game. We've been talking before the game about your cause, and it's cause day, so we, we want to raise awareness. So Lexi Brown, what is your cause, and why is it near and dear to you? Uh, my cause is the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation, and I was recently diagnosed with Crohn's disease. so. Um, it's just something that is important to me. Um, I like to be an example of somebody that can live an active lifestyle, a healthy lifestyle, while dealing with, you know, the struggles of having Crohn's disease. So, um, I'm a Crohn's girl now. You're hey, Crohn's girl. Let's try and make it uh, as fabulous as possible. But it's hard, and you know, I, I found a little mini community. Uh, with a lot of other people who are struggling with similar things that I am, and it, it, that definitely helps. So I'm hoping that I can be, you know, any type of help to anybody that is dealing with, with something similar to Crohn's. Is, is there a sense of relief for you? Because you just found this out recently, right? Yeah, I mean, going through the whole summer not knowing what was going on was, you know, it was, it was a, it was an emotional roller coaster. You know, I didn't even know if I was even going to be able to play again the way my body was feeling. So um, shout out to UCLA Health for helping me through this, you know, got my diagnosis and they've been taking care of me since June um, and still are. So shout out to them, shout out to my surgeon, my doctors, everybody that has helped me along along the way in this tough process because I would not be out here playing on this court without them. As much as it affects you physically, I, I, I can imagine it would be such a mental, like, you know, mind juggle, right? Yeah. So how are you able to get back mentally strong and even have the desire to return to basketball? Yeah, I mean, first, a lot of prayer. Um, first, it was a lot of why, why God is this happening to me? And then it was like, all right, God, now how can I make this test a testimony? Um, and just doing, and just keeping a positive mindset. I mean, that was one of the things my surgeon told me was that one of the, the, the first steps to recovery and dealing with this is having a good positive outlook on it and not letting this, you know, uh, disease control you and take over your life um so a lot of prayer pilates which is you know like active yoga yoga is a little too slow um so <laughs> pilates has been you know great for me yes ray look at my baby go <laughs> Lexi my Brown. little baby spark well baby lexi spark. We, we we chatted with you before your game today and just you seem so uh, graceful out there on the floor the game is uh being good to you and you're being great to the game so it seems like you've found a happy place and you're you're making that uh your productivity has stood out on the court and it seems like everything's coming at ease for you yeah as a player. i mean that's what hard work does i mean you, you prepare for opportunities and when those opportunities come you are ready to go and i think that's like my career in a nutshell so being able to have au uh in the off season to help me like work on things get confident and get ready for the w season has been such a blessing Lexi Brown, fifth on the leaderboard after her final game of week two moments ago. We're going to work on that word for you, finesse. we got to find another word for uh, Lexi Brown. I would, I would throw my own song in there, but I'm reminded every day I'm getting a little older, so let me just, <laughs> let me just reel it back, you know? I want to hear your word. All right, Lexi Brown, we'll check back in again soon. Sorry, Thank you. Quiet, Lexi. <laughs> Good stuff. She was a blast to watch this weekend, and that chemistry with Natasha Cloud was evident, and her answer explains everything. Yeah, it's a long-standing chemistry. Um, I'm I'm interested to see Team Mitchell's adjustments. You just saw Whitney Knight with a three. She said that she's been focusing on her defense, defense and rebounding and energy, and I think that energy was reflected in that, that shot she just made. Emily Engsler, 10 first quarter points, four of five from deep, two of two from deep four or five overall and Whitney Knight answers from the top of the key. Yeah, like I said, she, she wanted to focus on defense and rebounding, but she knows that her team needs that offense right now. They, they want to get back and close this gap a little bit. So Whitney Knight just comes in with that spark of energy that the team needs. 
Tiffany Mitchell leaves it short. Mitchell just four points, one of seven shooting. Emily Aisler really doing all the dirty work, doing what needs to get done for this team. Exler looking and turned over by the gold squad. 90 seconds to go in the frame. Setting up well for Team Gray to win the quarter and each player will get 60 points for the quarter win. And Emily Engsler has just been continuing to impress me with her ability to affect both ends of the court, but just getting good looks to the basket and pulling up confidently, knowing that she can impact both ends of the court. Engsler with three blocks, make it four now in this quarter. She just got whistled for a technical foul though. But you know what, that's the passion. Emily is never one to steer away from being passionate about everything on the court. I love her heart, I think that it's great. Now, she does lose points for that though. She does. That, that is the one thing, and we have to start really honing in on that at the halfway point of the season. You lose eight points for any sort of foul committed, even a tech. But she is making moves, that's for sure. Engsler, ninth on the leaderboard, up over 2,200 points, in shape to get 60 more with a quarter wing. Burrell with the float game. And those watching at home, Emily Engsler is who we are keeping our eye on to try to inch her way up to being a captain next week. She has to have a stellar game, but we are on the lookout. And we say that really because the players that were in the blue and the purple, they can't add any more points to their total. So the yeah. players in action have the most room to grow. The other player, of course, is Tiffany Mitchell, who is off to a slow start, but has built a cushion, a base, to stick around that top four. Jones falling away. Knight got a piece of it, and the officials deem a jump ball. Yeah, Team Gray defense was able to kind of disjoint what Tiffany Mitchell wanted to come in this game doing. She said that her keys for this game is to start fast, play fast, and just get out in transition, just push, 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 push. Playing fast is their key, and Team Gray was able to disrupt that early on. Team Gray also owning the glass. Plus eight in the rebound category. Shot clock to seven seconds for Air Hearn. One for one from distance. Long two for Hearn. Foot was on the line. Air Hearn entering play today. 13th on the leaderboard. Colson's pull up, no. T. Mitchell barely shooting 30% for the first quarter. And Team Gray, 65%. Sequoia Holmes plays on to his back in the lineup, inactive for the first two games. Out of bounds on Team Gray. All 10 players are available for Alicia to wrap up the weekend. Taj Cole with one. First quarter in the books. Team Gray drops 36 on Team Mitchell. 60 points to each member of the squad. And Emily Engsler has her sights on possibly being a captain. Big first quarter leading the way with 10 points.
A season high in Athletes Unlimited for points scored in a quarter, 36 by Team Gray, leading by 12. Emily Engsler filling up the stat sheet. Let's go into the game now with the Air National Guard. Yeah, she likes the pump fake pull up though. Very and gets slow. up real high. It is slow though, that's the only good Very thing. Slow. She has a high shit release, so it's really hard for me to like. If she open. gets there, yeah, sometimes she'd be scoring that. Chill, chill, chill. Chill, chill, chill. Chill, chill, chill. Chill. She's a she's an op for real. Damn, I know. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> I was bound to foul you though, Lucky. <laughs> That was luck. Emily Engsler is working her way up the leaderboard with this performance so far. Ten points, four of five shooting, two of two from three-point land, four block shots, leading the league in blocks in her first AU season, up over 2,300 leaderboard points. The first pick of gold team Jersey representative this week, team captain Alicia Gray joining us for a chair chat. You've been telling us you were hoping to get to this point this weekend, and here you are. You delivered on your promise. Yeah, I was supposed to do it last game, but it was a little intense, so we took a lead in this game. I was like, let me hop in the chair right quick, because I don't know when I'm going to be back over here. You know, you you're not used to losing. You're just not. It's just, <laughs> just not your thing, right? And so I was wondering how you were going to bounce back and just get your team rallied up into starting with a great, you know, tempo. What did you say to this team? I know you're not a captain of many words, but you might be. I mean, the biggest thing was just to keep it simple. Uh, just lock in and do the small things that we messed up on last game, like getting back in, the, in transition, uh, limiting them to one possession, just things like that. But yeah, just locking in and getting the win because you don't want to go one and two. Like, no. <laughs> Coming from a player who went 3-0 last week, doesn't like to lose. Uh, it is cause day here on this Sunday to wrap up week two. Alicia, you are here to represent ZB's Heart Foundation. What can you tell us about your cause? Uh, it's actually uh, Nas's family's foundation. Uh, I know uh, learning her brother's story and my brother had a similar story to hers. Uh, my brother had a heart condition as well, which caused him to retire early from the the game of football so I was very relatable in that way and my brother's a very very special person to me so I just got here and play hard for him because I know he's very supportive that's beautiful and Nas is one of those that um, we're very familiar with at AU Athletes Unlimited Nas Hillman just really did her thing last season and that's a relationship that you really value and Athletes Unlimited enables people to just make bonds right so what's been the funnest part of being here and and who have you really connected with since you've been here uh well you know i'm a person of very many words so <laughs> <laughs> you know i really i really bond with tim sid tosh and izzy i mean those are only four people that's a lot to me so yeah i, I kind of just talk to them when i see them you know i'm a homebody so like, i just be chilling at home for real but you know, I talk to them because they're, they're relatable and they, they just let me stay within my box and don't make me uh, uncomfortable or make me step outside my box. How do you feel knowing that y'all never will all be on the same team? I was heartbroken. Like, you don't understand how stressful that draft was because it's like me, Tiff, and Tosh, we all had that same mindset. So it was like they were drafting players I wanted. I was drafting players. They wanted to, every time I was like, pick, I'm like, dang, like, that's what I wanted. So back back to the drawing board. But, yeah, the Avengers, the AU Avengers, uh, we, we disassembled. I'm very sad. <laughs> well, now, I, now I get an understanding of why you like to keep talking to them. You're trying to get some draft strategy out of them. <laughs> Is that what's going on? Yeah, I'm like, keep your enemies closer. Let's kind of make a deal. Let me have this person this week, and you can have them next week. <laughs> <laughs> Alicia Gray with us for a chair chat. Hey, uh, I think you know at this point that you are uh, really sitting pretty in the leaderboard right now. You've got a shot to get up to number one again. How do you like wearing that gold jersey? Uh, the gold jersey's nice, black and gold. I mean, these were my high school colors, and, and I was a winner back in high school, too. So we're just going to keep keep the winning juices flowing.
She uh, whispers too when the free throws are happening. Right, right. I mean, it's, it's almost like a, a sign of respect, right? But we're not about that. We're about like, well, I guess it is your team, so you're paying attention as well. But when you're when you're going in and out the game and knowing when to sub yourself out and just as as a captain slash coach slash player, how do you manage all of that each game? Uh, I mean, Bree has been a big help. Uh, she's really smart on the X and O's. So I mean, I just really leave leave it in Bree hand. If I see something, I'll I'll give my opinion like he's very open but for the most part like the x and o's i mean this is all breeze doing so what have you seen this game be be a, be a you be a brief uh i mean we're executing to the game plan i mean we're doing what we're supposed to do i mean we just foul but you know that that happens but overall i mean we're playing hard i mean we we're still keeping our lead we're winning the quarter right now so good team execution alicia gray played 79 minutes on thursday and saturday combined and Having her in this chair right now is actually pretty impressive when you consider uh, she doesn't come out of the game very often. Yeah, you know, I came out came out just to do this chair, but I'm about to go back in. So. <laughs> the goggles have been reapplied. They, I'm just glad you told us bye before you, you threw down the mic and ran back in the game. I appreciate y'all. <laughs> Alicia Gray, number one on the leaderboard coming in this weekend, tries to get back there. Thanks so much. I love when they love talking to us on chair chat. That's so fun. <laughs> I'm just honored she gave us her time and she wanted to, that's why she did it. She really wanted to talk to us. I mean, she had room to breathe, right? They, they came out swinging. Team Gray came out swinging. Alicia Gray does not like to lose and she made it very clear to her team. And between that and the facilitator like Brian January, you're destined to come out swinging. And for the sake of the leaderboard, in her case, she still gets credit if you win the quarter even yep. if she's not out there. So she's like, perfect. Got this cushion, won the first quarter. And Team Gray is winning quarter two by just one. And she can absolutely afford to spread the wealth. Not that she was hoarding wealth, but she can afford to let her other teammates work. She can, right? But Angsler, mm -hmm. Kalani Brown, yep. names floating in that top 10 range that could squeak into the top four. Mm -hmm. They need those quarter wins. They do, they do, and they're playing like they do. Segrist on the second chance, swatted by Jones. Haley Jones had 12 boards yesterday, a season high settling in. Burrell, three, bucket, bucket, Burrell. And the lead is 16 for Team Gray. And it's great to see Soraya in the game, just getting her teammates involved and, and finding Ray Burrell right there at the top of the key. Both teams have drilled four threes. Brown in the top 10, Engsler number seven, as we show you the leaderboard on the final day, final game of week two out of four AU Pro Basketball. See Tiffany's grabbing that ball, just pushing in transition, trying to make something happen, something happen for her team. Tiffany, part of a turnover there, so she has to be careful, does have enough of a cushion, if indeed she wants to be in that captain spot next week which we've discussed, it's been challenging for Tiffany. She's been outspoken about that, still trying to figure out how to best lead in that seat. And that's something that they grow and learn to do, yes. right? Like that's, that's nobody's ever comfortable when they're taken outside of their natural position, right? You, you're not naturally a coach or a GM when you play. And so Athletes Unlimited enables them to stretch their talents in that way. It's a good reminder by you, Ari, because the other three captains have all played at least one AU season. Alicia in year two, Sims and Cloud in each of their third years. But we know Tiffany as a vet, nine years in the WNBA takes a little while for that to sink in but her confidence has grown as a player here too oh Just, no question you know forget the gm and, and coach part tiffany as a player you saw the emotional piece with savannah collins our, our our great um teammate but she sat down with tiffany mitchell and tiffany said like i hold myself to these expectations and i just want to meet them and the passion that she oozes from her has been beautiful to see blossom on the court as a product Whitney Knight checks in for Tiana Muldrow. Ray Burrell with 15 points to lead the way for Team Gray. And Ray Burrell is not a, a woman of many words when it's talk, talking about the game and what her expectations for herself are, but she shows it in the way she plays. She's locked in. She wants those minutes. She wants to be effective for her team. Has seven of her 16 in the quarter. 
Colson kicks it out. Mitchell, who has not made a three yet today, draws a foul. Tiffany, Season, oh, go ahead. Tiffany said, if I can't get the shot off, I'm going to absorb the contact so I can shoot for it. 53-35, a six-point lead in the quarter and an 18-point lead in the game for Team Gray AU Pro Basketball. Halfway through second quarter here inside Fair Park Coliseum in Dallas. Team Gray with a season best for any team this season with 36 points in the first quarter, 18 point lead. Lexi Brown rejoins us, our star hey. in the stands. Hello. Lexi, fifth on the leaderboard. Yes. If Natasha Cloud ends up being a captain again, your teammate this told week. Her. Pick me first. Okay. I already told her. All right. That's one thing We're that was on my see mind. The, uh, the strategy of the captains, because I remember in season one when I was the captain, that we had our little duo, dynamic duos and trios, uh -huh. and we kind of left them alone. So I don't know. I feel like we got a little bit more competitors in this group. I feel like people might start trying to poach other people's. Okay. Uh, partners. I'm glad you went there because are you watching this thinking we, we need to break up Team Gray? They got to worry about breaking up Team Cloud. Okay. Oh. Love it. Yeah. I don't think, I think Taj need to try and get as many of the players that we had last week as possible. Obviously, that's not going to happen. But it might. Like I said, season one, we kind of like, we were pretty consistent, uh, you know, after week two with, you know, the point guards and their guards or their centers. But again, like I said earlier, we have like just a crazy amount of talent this season. So. I'm excited for this draft. I mean, I'm glad I'm not a captain. I was right there. I was like, oh, I'm five. I'm glad I'm not top four. I don't want that responsibility. I'm out here just vibing and hooping. <laughs> vibing and hooping. I love it. <laughs> I can <laughs> admire the honesty. <laughs> so, speaking of honesty, Brendan, Alicia Gray said, 
She's still settling in and trying to figure out how to be a captain. But Lexi, you've been a captain. I know you're not in that seat this week, but what is some advice that you give to captains? I, I'm, not, I'm not telling you to set up somebody who's not in your dynamic duo, but I'm saying a piece of advice on drafting the team. Yeah, I mean, just find people that complement your play style. Um, and then when you find those players, like, find out what they like, what they don't like, what actions they like, so you can get everybody involved and keep everybody happy. And then, most importantly, just make sure your defense is on point. And that's, again, that's why I love Tosh, because first thing she said was, we gonna play defense, and that's what we put in first. So, um, you know, we have enough talent to put points on the board, so it really comes down to who can, who can get the most stops. You've been deep in your media girly bag lately. Period. Right? Um, I'll get to what you're doing outside of AU, but put on your analyst hat real quick. Give us a little rundown on the game. What's going on right now? What are you impressed with? What can do better? Um, I'm very impressed with my girl Ray Burrell. Um, not surprised that she's playing like this. I love her energy, her motor. You know, she was dealing with a little bit of an injury this week, so I'm glad to see her pushing through and playing well. Um, and I think just Team Gray was probably a little upset that they took an L yesterday. So they're taking it out on Team Mitchell. So I think Tiff is, you know, trying to do the best she can, but she clearly looks like she's running out of gas a little bit, which is expected. She's been averaging like 30 freaking points a game. <laughs> um, so but you. they got to lock up on defense. At the end of the day, that that's what leads to wins is, is stopping them stopping them from scoring more points than you. And they're kind of and they're not taking care of the ball either. Some current LA Sparks, Ray Burrell and Lexi Brown, look out for the Sparks. Yeah, yeah. People are not. Let me not even. Oh, we don't know. Let's not get it. He's sleeping on y'all, Lexi. He's sleeping on the sparks. Y'all are super asleep on the baby sparks. Okay. Oh, come on, baby sparks. If, you and if, if, if we're not good, we're gonna be fun to watch. But we are gonna be good. But it's gonna be really fun season, and I'm really excited. Um, this will be. I mean, me and Ray have been on the sparks three years, but year one, you know, she got hurt last year. I got sick, so this will be our first season like officially playing together from beginning to end, so I'm really excited to play with her. And who knows, with two weeks to go in AU, maybe you can be teammates at some point? Yeah, we were teammates last week That's and right. with Team Sims, but, um, you know, I mean, we went 2 and one last week, but it was like kind of like a weird 2 and one I don't know how to describe it, but a win is a win. Um, <laughs> but I'm win. happy that she's out here hooping. I'm really, really proud of her. Lexi Brown, third year in AU, hanging around, number yeah. five on the leaderboard, making noise. Appreciate the time. Yep. All right, we'll go back to Lexi later in the game. Team Gray leads by 23, up 11 in this quarter. She mentioned Alicia Gray does not like losing, and so she knew that this team would come out and pushing it, and Tiffany Mitchell is being a casualty of it, right? just having to, a head full of steam trying to do what she can for her team. Tiffany Mitchell, one of nine shooting. And you have to bring that up because, again, you lose points for shots you miss, and that could be problematic for her captain standing. Let's watch this play by Jones. And Haley said, I don't care if this is my first year. I don't care if I'm, you know, one of the younger ones. I'm, I'm going to go into you. I'm going to dig into you. I'm going to run through you. I'm going to do what my captain said to do. 60 to 40. Eight-point lead for Team Gray in the quarter. Alicia, no. Gray with eight points. That's what's also standing out to me, Ari, is they had a mindset, and it hasn't been reliant on Alicia having to dominate. Captain Gray has been able to just get a breather, join us for chair chat, trusting her team, knowing that they're going to do right, knowing that they're going to do what they were told by the facilitator, Brian January, who is actually on the sideline coach right now. But but just being able to come in swinging because they know that their identity is not those that, that lose. They don't like to lose. Team Gray, first team in Athletes Unlimited Pro Basketball history to score 60 plus points in the first half of the game. And there's still two minutes on the clock. It's just, it's such a high scoring game. How are you gonna stop Team Gray is what, if, if halftime, if I'm Tiffany Mitchell, I'm like, we just need to stop them, stop that momentum. Taj Cole with the free throw line. She said the day is the best day of the week, so she's gonna give everything she's got today. Experience the excitement yourself at an AU Pro basketball game here in Dallas. Go to auprosports.com slash tickets to get yours today. Two weeks to go in this four week season. I mean the score, Brendan, 60 to 43. Team Gray is the first team in the league in history 
to score 60 plus points in the first half of the game. I just, when I tell you, I was talking to Tiffany Mitchell and honestly, Alicia Gray's team is playing exactly how Tiffany Mitchell wanted to play, come out swinging. 7-0 run for the squad in orange. Down four in the quarter, so not out of the realm of possibility for Tiffany and company to win it. Engsler's made two threes today. Nice move by McGuire. Slippery. She had a good look, but she, she opted for the better drive. But obviously Tiffany wins. <laughs> Tiffany's got that look in her eye right now. Got to get back on track. Eight different players, eight, have scored for Team Gray. Talk about that well rounded As we talked about Team Cloud, everybody eats well. Team Gray, it's looking good for them too. Cleared by Muldrow, lobbed ahead. Mitchell to Cole, and Taj Cole returns to the line. And Soraya just try to get a hand on it, try to do a good, clean block. A little contact right there. Last couple of possessions, you felt the urgency mm -hmm. of Team Mitchell. Absolutely. Push, 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 push. They're running into us. Let's run into them, too. Cole now four for four at the line. And that makes the quarter gap just three. 26-23. Team Gray leads. I'm excited to see Dora Harrison check in, just seeing what she can do. Um, she had a great week one, and just knowing that she's gonna come in and try to prove herself, so she has something to prove too, like proving herself right, right? Like she, she knows her ability, she wants to showcase it to the world. This is uh, someone who could not walk in October due to an accident with a hot tea. And so just seeing her back on the court is a blessing. Harrison did not play yesterday in Team Mitchell's loss to Team Sims. She got tangled up with Kalani Brown, but I love that she's challenging Kalani's size because Brown is just confidently in the pain like that. I'm, I'm glad Dory tried to get in the way of that. Have to try something, right? Because Kalani was scoring at ease. Thursday night made clutch free throws for Team Gray to come from behind and beat Team Sims. Brown, an exceptional free throw shooter. 89%. Brown in the top 10, and that's the thing. I mean, that's the fascinating element of Athletes Unlimited, the leaderboard implications. Kalani only getting four shots. That could cost her to move, say, into a captain role, maybe. Yeah, yeah you know, it's, it's funny, because we were saying how it's gonna be hard to, to climb in the leaderboard um, to reach a captain spot, but this is such a high scoring game. It's, it's just, it's honestly, I'm in for a doozy. I am looking like, what are they gonna finish with? Because I never anticipated this 60 plus point performance. Tiffany Mitchell just finished through contact, but got hit with the tech. She's getting frustrated, wanted a whistle there, thought it was an and one. And you know, that frustration is warranted, just, just wanting to do what's best for your players. No, and, and she's probably tired too, like a little bit of fatigue in there too. Odyssey Sims told us that, you know, with our second week going on, the players are facing fatigue, but um, especially when you have a, a Team Gray who has something to prove today, doubling that, yeah, yeah, you're tired. And that's a big shot by Brown at the line because Team Gray leads the quarter by three. And they have the ball course after the Mitchell basket so for Alicia's team they want to work the clock here potentially they leave Engsler open dishes Brown the box out by Muldrow 18 seconds a chance to tie the quarter with a three Cole has he eight in the quarter for Cole crossover three no Gray's got it almost swiped away by Mitchell No, I, I, I like <laughs> 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 Tiffany and Alicia twisting and turning there. The besties got something to say. They're talking back and forth. I wonder what they're talking about. I told you, 
Tiffany jokingly said that she's gonna win a box and one on Alicia. So I, I'm just I'm just tickled in how they handle themselves. 15-point lead for Team Gray, an AU record, 65 points in the first half. Janae Sims will talk to you next for halftime here in Dallas, Texas, AU Pro Hoops. Welcome back to Dallas, Texas, here at Athletes Unlimited. Team Gray holds a pretty big lead over Team Mitchell, 65 to 50. Now, everyone who plays basketball has a why, and everyone here at Athletes Unlimited has their cause. The Athlete Causes program lets players choose a nonprofit of their choice to play for throughout the season. At the end of the season, that nonprofit will receive a grant matching 100% of the season win bonus. Hear why this program is so important to our athletes now. I always appreciate the opportunity um, that AU presents to play for our cause. There's no other professional league in the entire world that does what we do. I knew I wanted to be a part of the league because of that. Uh, I've always been raised to care about others. Uh, to give back. It's amazing to be able to help others just by putting the ball in a hoop. It gives that extra push during the season, during games, when you might be tired or you might be frustrated. You know that this is for something that is much bigger than just basketball. It makes every game that you play even more important and special to you, knowing that every night I'm gonna go give my all because I know what I'm playing for. For us to be able to speak on causes that we believe in, be able to give back, um, speak about them on the platforms that we have is really special and to have um, an organization that not only backs you but encourages you, empowers you to do that, it's, it's not seen in a lot of places. So I'm really excited to get to be able to give back as I'm sure every other player here is. Players 
are truly playing for what they believe in at Athletes Unlimited, and some are playing for what they have been through. Lexi Brown told us earlier that she is playing for Crohn's disease as she was just diagnosed with it. Tiffany Mitchell is playing for My Block, My Hood, My City. To learn more about the Athlete Causes program, visit auprosports.com slash athlete causes. Coming up next, Emily Inksler talks about her cause and why it's near and dear to her heart. Welcome back to Athletes Unlimited here in Dallas, Texas. Team Gray holds a lead of 60, 65 to 50. 65, oh wow, yeah, big lead. 65 to 50 here at here in Dallas, Texas. Emily Inksler is play, playing for her heart and her mind. She has chosen the Virago Project as her nonprofit to play for. Let her tell you why it goes so much deeper than basketball. Hear from her now. I'm playing for the Virago Project because I think that it's extremely important for um, specifically, obviously, women athletes who um, need guidance within their mental health. There are numerous things that they're trying to do and on the road and traveling to different collegiate campuses and high school campuses and being able to give them these psychologists and people who are gonna talk to them and allow them to tell their stories. And I think it's extremely important, and for me it is. I've, I've dealt with my own struggles, just as I've, I've bet many people have, but um, I don't feel I got that a lot growing up. So it's really nice to see that. It's something that I can give back to and other athletes can get. A beautiful message and a beautiful cause from In Emily Ingsler. Coming up next, Ari and Brendan break down our first half.
see they can't guard it. I saw you tried it too. We're going to perfect it. We're going to perfect it. Can you do me a favor? I'm going to just shoot free throws. Can you just rebound so they don't get hit? Thank you. Come on. Hey. Hey, all I'm asking is on that background, she is hitting me in the back. On the which one? On the wraparound shield. It's a lot of contact. Good take, Ray. Emily Engsler, so graceful with the officials in that first half. 12 points, one of three players in double figures. An AU record, 65 points in the first half for Alicia Gray and company trying to close things down. Week two, Sunday, Athletes Unlimited, Brendan Glasheen and Ari Chambers, Janae Sims on the sidelines. Just an absolutely complete first half by Team Gray. We should not have been shocked because Team Gray came out swinging, but you know what? When I talked to Emily Inksler, she said, we weren't really focused on the fact that we didn't win last game, mm -hmm. but this is the identity that Alicia Gray has been tr trying to tell us to play with the entire time. So they're just playing the basketball that they know how to play. And that's something special. They're utilizing everybody. We talk about X factors. Let's get into Ray Burrell first, because mm -hmm. Ray Burrell, just like Lexi said in our chair chat, she can just randomly drop 30 on you at any given time. You won't even even know it. But Ray Burrell is extremely efficient, shooting five from seven from the field, five from five from free throws. That's very completely accurate. She is doing a great job of reading the defense and taking her time. I know it's a fast-paced game, especially on the Team Gray end, but she's fighting to the finish, and she's saying her teammates are utilizing uh, her and getting her in position to be great. Emily, though, Emily Ingsler, rebounding and hustle queen. I mean, she's, she's been playing into the fact that they are allowing such a fast pace. It, and her teammates, again, are allowing her to score the ball well. No one was missing. Everybody was efficient. And that's what she's saying that is going well for Team Gray. All nine players who have checked in, eight have scored for Team Gray. They shoot 60% from the floor, plus seven on the glass. And they're not letting Team Mitchell run. Zero fast break points for them. Yeah, the run too. But like we talked about Maddie Segrist being a great presence in the paint as well. Uh, Emily Inkster says she's had her eye locked in on Maddie Segrist and boxing out. Boxing out is key for Emily Inkster and making sure that they can't do what they no normally do. And so shout out to them for shutting it down. And let's see how the next half switches around for Team Mitchell or does it, does it? Maddie Segrist 11th on the leaderboard, her cause throughout AU Pro Basketball Season 3 Special Olympics USA National Team. Let's learn why this is important to Maddie Segrist. I'm playing for Special Olympics USA Basketball Team because um, when I was at Villanova, we have a manager who's still there, RG, and she's played for the Special Olympics. She's been around Villanova my whole career and you know we're able to watch her when she plays in the PA games. Seeing how important that is, um, that was a cause I definitely was drawn to right away. The Athlete Causes program powered by Give Lively allows athletes to play in part for the benefit of the nonprofit organization of their choice. At the end of the season, the nonprofit partner will receive a grant matching 100% of the athlete's season win bonus. To learn more about the Athlete Causes program, visit AUProsports.com slash athlete dash causes. Good stuff from Maddie Segrist, all the players, 40 world-class athletes, more than just the game and what they contribute off the court. Incentive to bring it on the court to deliver off of it. That's true, additional incentive, right? Every, you know every possession counts, every action counts, every action causes a reaction in the points system, and the points are accumulated and make just the, the extra stipends that Athletes Unlimited is going to match and be able to donate. Here's the leaderboard. We've highlighted Engsler just because of her volume on the defensive end, blocking shots specifically. Currently 428 points behind Odyssey Sims. And the top four become captains, but we bring up Sims because Mitchell, in theory, Mitchell's going to keep playing mm -hmm. and can accumulate points. She just has enough there where I think that key number, Ari, is 2822 for someone to sneak in and knock one of the four captains from week two out for week three. Absolutely. We have the quarter wins, the game wins. We have the, the game productivity.
to consider. So I'm, I have my eyes on Emily Inkster. I have had it uh, since before the game, and now I'm like, okay, let's see what you can do. How, how high can you climb? I guess there is a possibility where Mitchell falls below Anxler and Tiffany could finish fifth, but she just knocked out a couple of free throws and is, I think she just has enough of a lead where she's gonna keep playing and be the go-to for her squad. Absolutely, uh, Tiffany can't let up, right? Because she has to set the standard for how she wants her team to play. And you see the quick hands from Sydney Colson. She's sneaky like that, sneaky like that. She's unrattled all the time and just plays the game she knows how to play. Long two for Grace Berger, offensive rebound, Muldrow. Tiana Muldrow is one of those that I, I enjoy watching come into her own and really settle into what she's trying to accomplish. She said to me on day one of Athletes Unlimited that she had lost her love for the game. And so it, with each game, she's trying to find her place back in and she's still searching. She said today, she said, I'm still searching for my love, but one thing about Athletes Unlimited, it's allowed me to have fun. So she's regaining the fun in basketball, so making it seem more like something she loves to do as opposed to a job for her. Had her first career AU double-double on Saturday, 13 points, 13 boards. This is a 10-point game. 5-0 run to start the quarter. The urgency being demonstrated by Team Mitchell. The urgency is translating into those runs. You're going to want to continue to push, 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 push. Like I said, when Tiffany went into today, she said she wants to play fast, get out in transition, and not let them go, get old boards, and just focus on playing fast. So she's going to want to push those points as quickly as possible. Hearn triggers the inbounds to Ali Shagray. Eight points for Gray. Quiet first half, but cares about the winning. Two quarter wins for her team. Has four assists, three rebounds. Let's keep in mind Ali Shagray still has some work to do to catch Natasha Cloud for the top spot. Right now, just 13 points behind Cloud to get number one back in her control. It was a quiet first half for her because she was allowed to sit. She has a deep enough team that she she had the trust in them. They, they, they did the work that they needed to do so that Alicia Gray can, can rest a little bit. She rested for six minutes. Yeah, look. That's Played a, 14 that's, of the 20. That's like more than she rested the other two games total, like combined. 79 minutes. Yep, there Thursday we go. Thursday and Saturday combined. That means uh, one, one minute. minute. <laughs> one minute. One minute of break. Right. Could be seconds. They rounded up. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying on this court, you know. Heard that, at least. 8 0 run to open the third quarter for Team Mitchell. Segris just racked up a block shot. 10 points for a block on the leaderboard. Gray missed it. Tracked down by Engsler. On the drive, outlet to Hearn, who's made three threes in each of her last two. Gray, spin, in contact, and two at the line upcoming. You know, Alicia Gray is going to keep trying to find her shot and, and keep trying to make it happen from the field, but the contact was drawn, so she'll be able to shoot for it. Alicia Gray, first trip to the free throw line, second in the league entering Sunday's action in free throws made and attempted. The bench is screaming, you got at least give me one, give me one. So just, just knowing that her teammates are rallying behind her, just, you know, next shot mentality. And just the way her teammates embraced her in the public address lineup announcements, they love Alicia Gray as a captain. Her second stint as a captain, both in her second year in AU. Uh, Alicia Gray, she tickles me. I just, I would want to play for her. I would want to play for her. She, she has a great game, a great comprehensive game. Mm -hmm. And she's just fun to be around. If you know Alicia Gray, off of the court, you just know that she's not, she doesn't say much, but she's the funniest person you'll ever encounter. Her personality is great. I just, I just love her. Well, coming into this experience, a lot of momentum for her, right, was traded from the Dallas Wings to the Atlanta Dream. And 
became a first-time All-Star. She's running that show. She's in, in the Atlanta. right. She's a big piece for that team. She's in the right position in Atlanta. She likes her team. Like Ryan Howard and Nas Hillman are two of her best friends. They have a little group, law firm. I don't know if I'm talking too much, but uh, it's just just knowing that those three stick together and they're just a very cute little trio. And Atlanta Dream has added some extra pieces on the offseason, and I, I can't wait to see what they do uh, with the competitiveness and just youthfulness balanced with veteran leadership. They had a team of Charles. <laughs> Come on. They'll be a tough out. It'll be interesting, that's for sure. And Alicia hoping to win her fifth game in the captain's role. And go to two and one on the weekend after three and oh last week in the orange. Muldrow fires. Rebound, Alicia Gray. Berger on her hip. Burrell has been hot today. Ray Burrell rattles in the three. That's her second today. I'm shocked you don't have a heat pun ready for us, Brendan. Missed opportunity. <laughs> got Zaya cooking, which obviously her last name, last game, but let's let's think of one for Ray at some point. A ray of fire? We, we jinxed it. Gosh darn. Yeah. But it's an open look. Yeah, and that's what? been the case for Team Gray, shooting 54%. Grace Berger. Grace Berger lays it in. This is a 14-4 third quarter in favor of Team Mitchell. Five-point game overall. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And this is how Tiffany Mitchell wanted to start the game. She wanted to start swinging the way that Alicia Gray's team has been swinging. But um, we'll see that in this half of the game. Burn up to nine points, four of four shooting. Tiffany, Tiffany Mitchell adds two more. 16 for Mitchell. Gray draws a double, Colson comes over. And they're gonna get team Mitchell for a foul. It is going to be on Seacrest. Just, just getting Kalani that ball. Uh, shout out to Temple Women's Basketball, looks like is in the house. This is a place where everybody can come. It's a party in Athletes Unlimited. We've had TCU. We've had, who else have we had? SMU, now Temple. Conference tournaments are happening and some of them are in Fort Worth and so they're able to come on down to, to Dallas and make their way here. Good stuff. Great view of the setup here at AU. Temple will play at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas tomorrow at 9 o'clock in the American Athletic Conference Championship. And it's, it's great that Athletes Unlimited is in Dallas, which is one of the meccas of basketball in the United States. And so the collegiate teams can come and see what it's like playing on a professional level in the United States. They don't have to wait till summertime. They got it here right now. Mitchell, the swirly. Adding to her total. Just when we start talking about, at least I did, maybe Tiffany Mitchell slips out of fourth or third. She's answering the call. Keeping our eyes on that leaderboard. You can check it out too, AUProSports.com for the most up-to-date numbers. Tiffany at 2,764 points. She's on the verge of passing Odyssey Sims, and that's why we keep that Sims 2822 number in mind for someone to possibly pass her. Colson for three. She's gonna look to find, Tiffany Mitchell's gonna look to find the best options right now because she wants to win this quarter and it's looking really, I mean, at the end of the quarter, it's only halfway through, but it's looking, it's looking good for her. They came out with a different mentality this half. Oh, they would have been thrilled with a quarter win, but now you're within five and yeah. you're trying to shape up yeah. the rest of this game, the final 15 minutes to possibly steal a game. Absolutely, it's very possible. Obviously, it's very possible, but I'm looking at this quarter win and I'm like, you came out dominant in the third quarter, which every single quarter counts. Hengsler using that up fake, drives, kicks, plays on, three. Oh, in the hands of Cray, look what I found. McCautry and Muldrow were both tied up there. And they're also tied in second chance points, and so just knowing that they're all just trying to, to get there and, and make sure they follow the shot until the end of the possession. 
Muldrow makes up for it on the other side. In the second half, third quarter, Team Mitchell much better from the field, 7 of 13. As the third quarter winds down, 4.15 to go. We got a five-point game, a 10-point lead for Team Mitchell in quarter number three. Athletes Unlimited Pro Basketball is sponsored by EY. Coming down to the wire here in Dallas, Texas, home of AU Pro Hoops Season 3. Fair Park Coliseum, Brendan Glasheen, Ari Chambers, Janae Sims. Great to have you all joining us today on the WNBA app. And also locally in Dallas, joining us tonight on KTXA TV channel 21 in Dallas Tiffany Mitchell making moves here in this third quarter her team is within five a 10-point lead in the quarter itself Janae Sims in the huddle what can you tell us team Mitchell is really team Mitchell's really chipping away at this lead and they really just focus on team gray being frustrated with how close they are um, with chipping away at this point total. Um, they want to keep going on defense, and they realize that everyone's getting tired um, during this third game, but they need that extra push to make sure they tie up and then get this lead. And they get the stop defensively. Angel McCautry, a staple down low. It's almost like they discussed it in the huddle. It's almost like they had a game plan going in. <laughs> The eighth turnover for Team Gray. Just five for Team Mitchell. Tiffany in the post. Captain against captain. Friend against friend, but not friends right now. And we're gonna go back to the other direction. Four players in double figures for Team Gray. Three of them on the bench right now. Burrell, Engsler, and Brown getting a rest. Alicia, the captain out there. Tiffany Mitchell with 18, one of three players in double digits for the Orange team. Seven to shoot. 
Jones wheels it around. Holmes with four. Holmes on the attack. And now, Ari, every player who's checked in for Team Gray has scored. You know, that's just the well-roundedness of the team that Alicia Gray has drafted, and she's really not bad at this. And uh, just, just knowing that they all have put themselves in a position so that everybody can perform. It's so great seeing TP, Teresa Plazant's back. She just said, get that out of my face. Yeah, just such a big presence, big body. Leads big to the break. 79-70, that media timeout proved beneficial for Alicia Gray and her team. Mitchell kicks out, Cole for three. Bottom, Taj Cole, first three of the game. Taj says, I, you know, I'm staying ready. Shoot, that's what I do. She says she wants to focus on everything, that, giving everything that she's got. Jones too strong. Tracked down by McCautry. Plows in the lane. And a jump ball. That's good hands by Haley Jones right there, just following the ball and just being able to get on top of it in a very clean way. Just hand on hand. Say, no, you're not going to get the one over on me. It's a fairly even jump ball. One by the orange team in McCautry. Cole, opposite wing. Taj does a great job, I think, too, communicating on the defensive end. That time, Plaisance runs the break smoothly. And she switched the motor, right? She saw Al Alicia was going to be able to find her, so she said, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick it up in the gear, make the read so I can just be in position to catch this and just make an easy land right there. Two minutes to go in the third. Team Mitchell with the ball, leading the quarter by seven. Tiffany has that lane clogged by Jones. Outlet Mincy. Plaisance. Her presence has been felt. Fari, you are correct having her back after being absent the last couple of games. Offensive foul, Haley Jones. Remember when we said Maddie Seekers so effective on both ends? Maddie Seekers is so effective on both ends. This is season number three of pro basketball, the second being played down here in Dallas. And we're peeking at that leaderboard just like the rest of you at home. Trying to find out if there's a chance that we don't see the same four captains next week. Does Emily Engsler or Maddie Seacrest have an opportunity to jump up into that top four? It's, it's, it's a possibility. Like, we, we were talking about it might be a little bit of a stretch, but look how high scoring this game is. Look at how intense this game has been. There's opportunity. Four second chance opportunities, McCautry and one. And a note on Odyssey Sims. Say, for example, Engsler gets there and Sims falls to four, assuming Mitchell goes mm -hmm. by Odyssey. Mm -hmm. The last time Odyssey Sims was not a captain was the final week of the 2022 AU season. I don't think even us as, as you know, on broadcast would know how to adjust our eyes to not having a team Sim. And it just rolls off the tongue too. You know? right, right. Four letters. <laughs> <laughs> Team Gray has got some ring to it. Gray and Cloud, we've had fun with those two names. Right, <laughs> right. Clouds in the sky and, and gray clouds, gray, gray skies. I don't know. You're, you're good at that, not me. Hey, partner, this is our sixth game together of the weekend. You should you should rap for the masses like you were before. Yeah. You have, you have, you can spit. Bars. <laughs> Angel McCautry not happy with that last call. Most calls, they aren't happy. I was explaining that to Cheryl right, last <laughs> week. Right? When are they happy? Are players they? ever satisfied with the ref calls? <laughs> Referring is such a thankless job, you know. Tiffany Mitchell. Her team in control of the quarter, leading by nine. Segrist tried to flip it, and then Gray traveled. 
And the frustration by Alicia Gray. She knows she did. Yeah. She's lost her balance, it looked like. Tied up. Final minute of the third. Got to give Team Gray some props, too. Segrist, only one rebound. The top rebounder in AU through the first couple of games. And Leansler said that's exactly what they were focusing on, not denying Segrist opportunities to rebound. Boxing out on and just making sure you're getting in her way and denying. That free throw a moment ago was because Gray got hit with a tech at the late of game. Taj Cole, parting of the seas, got fouled. <laughs> I can't believe it, and like we said, it's, it, the players are never going to be um, happy when they think they, they play clean defense and they get called for it. Taj Cole, her cause, Shining Stars Sports Academy. Today is cause day here on day three of week two. The finale of week two. Eighty-two seventy-nine. We got ourselves a close one now all of a sudden. I just wanna add to the causes though, because a lot of these players are picking causes based on what they're dealing with in their personal life. I love Sydney Colson's cause, the Goofy Jackson Charitable Foundation, because first of all, not only is she playing for it, she got Rebecca Harris involved as well, but Sydney's mom actually has autoimmune disease. So this organization has money to, to put forth to, to increase research because it is so rare. And they have conferences in different states and allow the people who are affected by the autoimmune disease to meet one another and, and so they don't feel as alone because when you when you have a rare autoimmune disease you can you can feel alone you know we were talking to Lexi Brown earlier about her Crohn's disease and she says it could be isolating going through what you're going through and not being able to come into contact with people who have similar issues right similarly similar dealing and so Sydney, I can't wait to see uh, how much money she raises, raises for this cause and just knowing it's near and dear to her and Rebecca Harris joining in and, and showing her support for Sydney Colson. Love that. You can find out more about the athletes' causes at uprosports.com slash athlete causes. 11 point lead in the quarter. Cole wants more off the back iron. We make the turn for home. Fourth quarter coming up after a historic first half by Team Gray. The 65 points. They get held to 18 in the third quarter. Tiffany Mitchell with 19 to lead all scores today. Emily Engsler, will she be a captain next week? She can make a push in the fourth quarter. Don't go anywhere.
Emily Exler and Team Gray with a four point lead. Heading to the fourth quarter, Team Mitchell just won the third quarter. Taking a look at the leaderboard, our two featured players in this game tonight as far as what could be moving. Alicia Gray is number one by one point, just past Natasha Cloud. But this is where it gets interesting. Engsler having a massive game, five block shots, five boards, 12 points. She's up to 21 blocks now this season, second most in a single season in AU history. And there's still two weeks left in this thing. Talk about a disruptor. Emily Engsler just showing the grittiness about herself and just saying, hey, I'm here. This is my presence. I'm, I'm out here. I'm out here. And she, we're on Emily Engsler watch tonight, y'all, in case, in case we haven't made that abundantly clear. Again, we're watching the twists and turns of the leaderboard as Alicia Gray got fouled. Alicia Gray takes a lot of contact a lot of times. It gets up. Yeah, there was a hold of everyone's breath there for a second, but she bounces up. Good sign. She's going to need an ice bath or something. Engsler just taking a look again. Engsler's about 400 points away from Odyssey Sims. 416 to be exact. And right now she's on the bench. Right. But, you know, anything can happen. You, know, you can't lose points being on the bench. But you can gain. Yeah. 85-79. Buckle up for a great finish to week two. Taj Cole at the point. Out there with Segrist, Berger, Muldrow, and Mincy. Jones, Burrell, Plaisance, Gray, and Brown, the five for Team Gray. Good offense here, moving the ball. Berger knocks down the elbow jam. Grace Berger's been kind of quiet, yeah. but when, when she, when she you know, does her thing, she does her thing. Up fake, Burrell, three. Book it. That's great patience by Ray Burrell. Just making sure she's set up in the best position to be effective. Burrell being pestered by Cole. Ray Burrell feeds Brown. That's how the game started, getting Kalani looks on the block. And that's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. Kalani went up a little too strong, but you want to feed her. Segrist. The Team Mitchell X Factor. A quarter win as well as a game win for Team Mitchell would go a long way to secure Tiffany as a captain again next week. And that would probably secure that we're going to see the same two captains, pardon me, the same four captains next week. Different jersey colors, potentially. I wonder if they're going to, yeah, diff, is it going to be diff, diff, different drafting, right? It's gonna, I think it's going to heavily depend on the, the jersey color. But I'm, I'm wondering, I want things to get spicy. I like the mess, because right now, Natasha Cloud, as it stands, Natasha Cloud, well, I guess it will stand like this. If Odyssey Sims is the captain, Natasha Cloud has the ability to break up Odyssey Sims and Kirsten Bell. Mm -hmm. Each jersey color is affiliated with your spot on the leaderboard, so the captains go this way. First place gold, second place orange, third place blue, fourth place purple. That would, uh, that would definitely uh, change up the laundry for next week. I can see if I, <laughs> look, if I were a captain, I am breaking up Odyssey Sims and Kirsten Bell. I'm breaking them up. I'm, I'm playing defensive drafting here. Haley Jones in rhythm. Knocking it down. Jones starting to find her groove over these last two days after struggling on Thursday. 13 points, five boards. Team Gray still shooting an excellent 55%. Segrist is fouled. And let's have a look at the draft structure, what you need to know with the draft tomorrow on the Athletes Unlimited YouTube channel, 1 Eastern. The top four go like this, gold, orange, blue, purple. Those are the captains. Then you flip it for picks. Purple goes first in the draft, blue second, orange third, gold fourth. And then you flip it back the other way. So gold's got those back to backs. Mm -hmm. And that's what's impressed me about Alicia Gray as a captain in the gold jersey. Mm -hmm. You have to understand the timing of your picks. Absolutely. If you have someone in mind, 
you got to go four or five. So this week, for example, she drafted Engsler four, yep. Burrell five. Mm, yep. Ooh. And those ended up being really good picks. I mean, look how Ray Burrell's played today. Engsler for the entirety of this season, her teammate in the orange last week. Kalani Brown, the footwork. Doing the, doing the post moves. Come on, Kalani. That was pretty. It was nice. Berger. But the second jump shot make of the quarter. Does Team Mitchell have enough gas in them to complete a comeback? Gray does not want to give them life. I mean, they've been running them down, but Team Mitchell has not backed down. They said, hold on, we're going to close this gap. They're only down by five. They set the tempo for the second half and really said, hey, y'all aren't going to get the best of us like this. At one point, had a 23-point lead, Team Gray, 60-37. That's good defense. With three minutes to go in the first half, they fought their hard. way back. Grace Berger, another basket. Six of her eight points in the third here. McCautry comes to double Brown. Tried to outlet, but picked off. She evaluated the size and said, yeah, I can take this, and then kind of second guess herself and tried to outlet, and didn't necessarily work. Mitchell ties the game. Hold the ball. I know. This is going to get interesting here. The game points are in jeopardy for both teams now. Timeout. Team Gray, Brian January, the facilitator, will talk things over with the group. 13-9, Team Mitchell in the quarter. Tiffany up to 22 points. Her first three of the game at the most opportune time. Fourth quarter continues here at Fair Park Coliseum in Dallas. Tied at 92, a 7-0 run by Team Tiffany Mitchell. Ray Burrell puts the head down, and maybe that was the scheme by Bree January, the facilitator. 
as well as team captain Alicia Gray. Let's attack and get this lead back. Breon January is just a wonderful basketball mind. And anybody who gets to learn from her each day, I just, you know, lucky, lucky. Ray Burrell, now six of six at the free throw line. Here's Bree Jan, WNBA assistant coach now with the Connecticut Sun. 14 years in the W. She's a defensive specialist, but she can drop an offensive play, okay? She can, she can get this offense going. Five-time all-first-team defense. Seagrist, no. Well, and that's why I think, especially in the first two drafts, Ari, we're seeing guards go in the leaderboard, mm -hmm. right? The guards are popular at the top. Yep. And Tiffany Mitchell looked for a point guard in her draft this past Great week. Job. Natasha well, Cloud found more uh, defensive guards like Lexi Brown mm -hmm. and Lexi Hall. And we're looking at the most up-to-date leaderboard, but to have, All guards. <laughs> to, to have Bree Jan yep. as your facilitator, that is not a bad person to have who can echo your sentiments and help you figure out and compartmentalize how you want to build it and coach it. Yeah, and it's captain's choice how much they want to lean into the facilitators. And a lot of times they like to draw their own plays up. But I know Alicia Gray has really tapped into Breon January's mind and they've been working collaboratively in order to have the best outcome for their team. Mitchell with a yell out loud after missing that free throw. That was a chance to tie it back up. Team Mitchell has not led today. That three by Mitchell before we went to break was huge to tie the game. We're about midway through the quarter. And they're gonna get Angel McCautry for another foul. I mean, what else can you do but smother Kalani in the paint like that? Smother, that's a good word smother. for it. You have to smother her, right? Or deny, deny before she even has the chance to catch, but she already had it, so got to smother. Number one on the leaderboard, Alicia Gray. Looks to add to the total, has a five-point lead on Natasha Cloud, and that does not factor in potential fourth quarter win points as well as game win points. But what does factor in is these fouls, you know, the fouls count for something. And they, they take away from your point total. Take away when you commit them. If yep. you draw fouls, you gain points. The stat points are insurmountable in Athletes Unlimited. So if <laughs> we're doing our best to explain them to you all, <laughs> so y'all aren't like Zayus, like I don't know what's going on, but you learn as you go and, and it's, it's a lot, it's dynamic. You lose eight when you commit a shooting foul, you gain four mm -hmm. if it's a drawn shooting foul. Tiffany's frustrated, and rightfully so. She, t she does absorb a lot of body when she's down there, and she, she wanted that foul called on her. I look at it, though, Ari, like when we tell people all of these stat notes, I mean, we're doing what Natasha Cloud would want us to do. We're allowing people to eat. We're feeding <laughs> them the info. <laughs> we're feeding y'all the info. Kalani with those quick hands. Come on, Kalani. Get Battle active, for the loose pole. Berger to Segrist. Kept the ball high. One point game. Have we mentioned it all since Thursday that all of these games have been super close? I mean, a one-point game right now, it's just, you know, we, we talk about a game of runs, and oh. it's been nothing but we'll See, I can't even get the word out before, you know, somebody else scores. But these teams have given us such great basketball in week two of Athletes Unlimited. It's balance, it's parity, parity, parity. That's what we see. Is Leash unleashed now? Her first three, 18 points, and a four-point lead for Team Gray, 101-97. Timeout on the floor, and how about, you know, today is cause day here at AU Pro Basketball. Whitney Knight of Team Mitchell. Let's find out more about what she's playing for. The cause I chose to play for is the KL Cancer Fund, and that is super important to me because um, I have family members, specifically my mom, who have dealt with breast cancer, and she was able to become a survivor of breast cancer, and my mom is somebody who is super important to me. She's the one that initially put me in the basketball, which has 
grown to be a sport I love. It really gives me all the feels to be able to donate to a fund that resonates with her as something that she went through and was able to overcome. Now the KL Kansas Fund is near and dear to my heart, Brendan. I am a national brand ambassador for it. And KL Cancer Fund is unique in the way that it, it talks about and raises funding for all cancers impacting women. So not just breast cancer, which is a misconception about the KL Cancer Fund, all cancers involving women. And I think it's just so important to keep staying active, keep staying vigilant in the research and education about that. We, we talk about thrivers and survivors, and every year we have pink games or KL yep. Cancer Fund games, and being able to see the visual representation of the people who have to fight for their lives and their warriors, and it's just so beautiful. And just knowing that Whitney Knight has such a close relationship with it is a testament to how many people are impacted by that one in three women one in three well, it's well said and uh, a credit to all these players and they're here to show their talents on the court without question but also how they can contribute to their cause and what they represent off of the court AU will match each player's win bonus so quarter wins as well as their game wins and donate 100% of what the player gets, they will match that number and commit that to their cause. So when pair, players get paid, number one is their base pay to be here, participate in AU. Number two are those win bonuses we just discussed. And number three, great finish on that leaderboard. Mm -hmm. That's why we are locked into it. Yeah, and just, it, again, I, I want to emphasize the importance of the KO Cancer Fund. It's all cancers affecting women. And just through strength, courage, and hope, uh, and I'm a product of Coach KL. We have a lot of people, not a lot, me, Chassie Melvin, and Akila Mays, who are products of North Carolina State University and just being beneficiaries of the legacy that is Coach KL. And so just sending all the love uh, to the KL Cancer Fund family and just making sure that you can keep doing the good work. So shout out to you all. Kalani Brown at the free throw line. A rare miss by Brown. Was seven of seven before that attempt. But just the way she's been able to attract all that attention, which leads to pesky defense, and so allowing her to be able to be on that free throw line. Now to make that second one was big because it gives Team Gray a one point quarter lead. They're trying to win three quarters tonight. And Earhart just lost control, but I just, it's, it's going to be a fact to the finish. I know we've, we've seen different runs, uh, not necessarily lead switches, but we've seen it close in and, and just people fighting for what they know is so important this quarter win. Emily Engsler sixth on the leaderboard, Tiffany Mitchell third, Alicia Gray in first. Just looking at the top and what players are featured in this game. Kalani Brown, who hit the free throw in ninth place. And again, the top four are your captains each week. As of right now, the same four players would be captains in week three. Uniforms could very well shuffle. And naturally, we're closer to Team Gray's bench, so I see how active they are in, in saying, hey, this is what we need to do, and just encouraging the players on the floor right now. Maddie Segrist in 11th place. She has fell five spots today. But impressive in her first AU season. Emily Engsler, first year in AU also. Adup Bulgak, first year player. So it's cool to see the first years. Because when you have a familiarity with this, just talking to players, we've had our chair chat, star uh -huh. in the stands. When you kind of have a feel for how it works, you know how the drafts might go and where you see fit. The new players, like Tiffany being a captain, and Engsler, Ray Burrell, it's fascinating to watch it unfold. I wonder if they play a little bit more loose, not knowing how the leaderboard works. Sure. Like a little bit more, hey, I can play my game and not have to worry about points and just let the points come to me. Uh, but Tiffany Mitchell came out, you know, it's like she had been here before and is staying on top. Mitchell has 25 points to lead her team. Down by three, Muldrow to tie. Short, 
Gray lobs it ahead to her first pick in the draft, Morrell, but missed the layup. Now, Ray Burrell is very frustrated that she, she in her in her mind, she's not getting the fouls that she wants, but there's a breakdown there. If I'm Sydney Colson, I'm pulling that, but she found her teammate in the corner, honey. Cole ties the game. So sacrifice that shot for a better shot, and she said, <laughs> all right, this is why I play basketball and you don't. Okay, great, great talk. Sydney Colson's a nicer person than I am, because that was a wide open look, but wow. Cole has had it going on. Her second three, a foul is called. And a lot of contact on Alicia Gray, in Alicia Gray's face. I know she's frustrated because she's been getting kind of banged up all night. And so just just not really getting getting that. But you see Sydney Colson found Taj Cole. Everything had collapsed and Taj Cole was wide open right there to knock that down. Then on the other end of the floor, again, Alicia Gray taking a lot of contact. Cole made two threes on Thursday. Continues to really excel in her role. 17 points is a new season high. Gray at the line, trying to score north of 20 points for a ninth game in a row. Gray, 20 points, now in eight straight and 11 of her last 13 games. This is the one possession game, Brendan, and it's going down to the wire. And again, finding Taj Cole in that corner, but just being so close, you're gonna just see the teams finish out really strong. You know, we've seen stages of fatigue go on throughout the game, but just expect the peskiness of the last, you know, minute and some change of play. Gray strong to the rack. Again, you understand the aggressiveness because Team Gray wants to win the game, but also maybe win the quarter. Down two in the quarter, 23-21. Absolutely. Again, every quarter counts as well as the, the game wins. So they're, they're really, it's a literal textbook de definition of fight to the finish. Especially as we've highlighted today, today being cause day, that is the theme. Win points, game or quarter. Winning those quarters and games help impact how much you can get donated as well. As a group, Team Gray, 26 of 32 at the free throw line. Team Mitchell, 28 of 29. 97% in a game for that many free throws. Awfully impressive. Alicia Gray is clutch. 11 in the fourth quarter. 90 seconds to go. Cole pulls up. Thought she got fouled. Tied quarter, 23-23. You can hear Teresa Plazons. We need a good possession. Engsler. No. There's Gray. Second chance points. Halfway down and out. You see possessions like that where you net, right? Alicia Gray got the rebound, but missed the shot. And so it's just it's just a strategy of point collecting and deducting here. And Team Mitchell's got to be careful because they're in the penalty. So they don't want to give Alicia Gray or her teammates more free throws. 14 right. seconds to work with. Hearn looking, lobs it to Burrell. Team Gray can take it under a minute if it wants to. Engsler. Rebound Segrist. Almost a one must score possession here. Colson sticks a three. And that's the shot that we looked at and told her. Like you can you can make those. And she knows. She was wide open. Knock it down. Team Mitchell within one and leads the quarter 26-23. Team Mitchell does not have to foul, of course. Hearn steps back and delivers a counter punch. And that confident back pedal. She said, yeah, I know. I know what I did. And a steal by Burrell. And that gives Team Gray the quarter lead. Jeez. Oh, an avalanche. Her 
Burns three, then the Burrell steal, 26 for Ray Burrell. I mean, that might just be the dagger. You know, you have Taj Cole finding Sidney Colson in the corner right there for a wide open three, but on the other end, you have a very confident Air Hearn with a response, okay? She backpedaled like, I know I do this. This is what I do, and I'm fighting for the quarter win and game win. And then you got the hands of Ray Burrell. Again, she's just so pesky and just being able to run the floor. People didn't even try to catch up right there. That might be the dagger for the game. Burrell's second steal. And let's remember how this weekend started, Ari. Yep. Thursday night, mm -hmm. Team Gray was trailing. Alicia had her struggles, then came alive down the stretch. Yep. And it was Air Hearn who hit that go-ahead three-pointer in the corner. And that was a three, like you said, to put this one potentially away. Now, still something to play for here mm -hmm. for Team Mitchell. Mm -hmm. They still want to try and win the quarter. Absolutely. And uh, like I said in the beginning of this game, Brianne January really likes to communicate like what she's impressed with and which players have impressed her most. And she said, if we're going to talk about the most impressive to me, it's Ear Hearn because she's so consistent and has been consistent from the start. She plays both ends of the court and is so steady, not forcing herself to play outside of her game. Six players for Team Gray in double figures. Burrell leads the charge with 26. Gray with 22. 3,344 leaderboard points. Trying to win her fifth game as a first. Trying to win a fifth game in her second stint as a captain. Second straight week, of course. And it's going to be a captain's challenge. I mean, why not? 20 seconds left. There are hugs on, on Team Gray's side. Obviously, they stopped the play to the end of the game, but they should be proud of themselves for turning around their fate in the last game. I remember folks on Monday talking about the draft by Alicia Gray, and they were thoroughly impressed, and that has all played out. This is an out-of-bounds situation, one of the two things that fall under the challenge criteria, a personal foul or an out-of-bounds decision by the officials. You know, as much as the players get frustrated, credit to all the staff here at AU, the officiating, doing the best they can. They're making adjustments as the games go by. Quick turnarounds as well. Yep. Three games in four days. Well, it's, a, it's a lot of work, you know? A lot of work. Six games. Four days. You got it. Yep. Two each day. Yep. Over four days. Yep, yep, yep. Six games. So we're out here, you know? <laughs> Just like they're out here. If they can sacrifice their bodies like that, sacrifice our voices, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the more and more we look at the leaderboard, folks, it's looking more and more like we're going to see the same four captains, but the order matters. Where you land equates to what jersey you wear. And the order is one gold, two orange, three blue, four purple. We're getting word that it's going to be an unsuccessful challenge. I've just been really proud of Emily Inksler in particular. Uh, she went in this game being such a star on both ends of the court, her rebounding in particular, but she's a hustle queen. She makes sure that she's doing all she can. You know, back to her Louisville days, I just remember her on the bench and in the game just reigniting no matter where she is on the floor, or what her role is on the team, she brings passion, exudes from her core. She just loves the game of basketball. And so she had a, a game plan for Maddie Seegers and did what she could and, and then had a game plan for herself and just finding that. And Emily Ingsler is just one of those ones. You're gonna have to watch her climbing up the leaderboard. She probably won't get in that captain spot going into week three, but just the fact of the matter is she she really makes an impact. And looking in the crystal ball, I'm excited to see what training camp with the Washington Mystics looks like for Emily Engsler. There's no reason why she wouldn't have WNBA roster spot. And I actually said that last year too. Foul committed by Team Mitchell. 18.1 left. 
Taj Cole. Call for the foul. Now, there is a scenario here after the free throw by mm -hmm. Team Gray where if the quarter ties mm -hmm. in the fourth, the team that wins the game gets the quarter points. But that's a key free throw to put Ooh. Team Gray up four in this quarter. 12 seconds, Muldrow. Two plus a foul. Team Mitchell still think, saying, hey, we, we, got, we got a little bit of time to try to try to close this as much. And again, playing for those quarter points. I know you see the score at home, 113 to 107, but the, the quarter points, Team Mitchell has 28, Team Gray has 30. So it's still possible. Still possible. <laughs> Team Gray is going to challenge the call. You get a challenge, uh, you get one for the first 38 minutes and one under two minutes, so might as well. You want to protect that quarter lead. Like why not? You have nothing to lose. So, looking at the leaderboard, oh, we'll look at the call first. Uh, no, she fouled. Yeah? It's fine. Yeah, she did. <laughs> but I, I, I love the... I love the energy here and, and just the utilization. Why not take time to, to breathe a little bit, drop something to finish the game? I think that was more so let's regroup and finish strong. And Engsler has five fouls now. Call stance. You were on it, Ari. That was a quick review. Muldrow hits it. Now it's just a one-point lead in the fourth quarter for Team Gray. They're going to foul for that reason. They are playing for the quarter win. I know I know. On, in normal situations, you know, it probably wouldn't be the case, but again, the quarter wins are really important. They're trying to not tie up, but just rack it up. Big make to make it a two-point lead. In the quarter for Team Gray. Ray Burrell having a career night in her first AU season. Lexi Brown warned us. Lexi Brown told us that Ray Burrell is a threat. On any given night, she can give you that work. And honey, yes. Tonight, Tiffany Mitchell doing all she can for her team. What she does, driving, just, just craftiness of how she moves with the ball and how she demands exactly what she wants out of her offense. But then getting her teammates involved, finding them, being able to always keep her head up and just looking exactly where she wants to go. Tiffany Mitchell, the grit of it all. You know, tonight, I know that this isn't exactly how she wanted the game to go in general. She set a precedent for what she wanted from her team from jump. And honestly, Team Gray kind of capitalized off of their strategy. But Tiffany Mitchell will remain a captain. And we'll see what team she can construct next week. Yeah, the one wrinkle it's looking like right now. Let's see if uh, Team Mitchell makes this interesting. To tie the quarter, no. And that'll do it. Team Gray improves to two and one. Alicia said, we can't be one and two. That just doesn't look right. Two and one, and Alicia Gray wins her fifth game as a captain. Want to quickly note, you can check AUProsports.com for the latest on the leaderboard. In all likelihood, it's going to be Gray, Cloud, Mitchell, Sims. Gold, orange, blue, purple. So just a little flip there. Uh -huh. Ari Chambers really enjoyed this this weekend. Great it's been stuff. great with you, Brendan. Our final score here tonight at Fair Park Coliseum in game two of our doubleheader. Team Gray 115, Team Mitchell 108. Athletes Unlimited Pro Basketball continues Thursday, week three, 6 Eastern. Check it out, AUProsports.com for the schedule. For Ari, Janae, and the entire crew, Brendan Glasheen, thanks for watching in Dallas, Texas. Good night and see you next week. Watch you fly.